Hello and welcome to the Bottom Up Skills Podcast. I'm Mike Parsons. I'm the CEO of Qualitance and we are on a journey of design thinking and I hope you're enjoying the series thus far because today we've got another goodie for you. We're going to be talking about how research can help you build empathy for understanding who your customer is. And it will all be inspired by design thinking. And uh, I'm just actually in the middle of conducting an enormous global research uh, for a consumer product. And so I'm living this right now. So I'm hoping that I can share with you um, all sorts of insights and tips and tricks on how to get the most out of this because Frankly, research you can just you can just get lost in in research and the data and then you know arguing about the insights and then arguing and tossing up between the recommendations and it's a kind of it can get very swampy when you do your research. So what I'm hoping to do is to give you sort of a fast track if you will on how to really validate a first generation product or service. Um, and how you can um, really have what I hope is real confidence in your idea because really that's what it's all about. We don't want to be guessing anymore. We want to know what our users need. We want problem solution fit. Okay, so we're talking research and there's primarily two types of research that are very powerful in early stage ideas and in particular for brand new products and services. We can get into all the other variations and permutations of research um, that may be more relevant for an existing product or service. Um, We can talk about NPS and all that sort of stuff, but we're focusing on creating something brand new. And between you and me, that's kind of the exciting stuff. So let's talk about these two types of research. One is quantitative and the other is qualitative. Now, you might hear these referred to very often as quant and qual um, because they're kind of like a mouthful, these whole things. But let me make it even simpler. You know, quant research um, is very much based on numbers and statistics and it's all uh, largely conducted in the form of a survey, okay? Now, qual research is much more about opinions. Um, The sample sizes, the number of people participating in the research is much smaller because if you think about it, you know, you can get hundreds of people to take a survey. That's fine, particularly taking the the survey online. But if you're going to do really good work in your interviews, you only want to conduct five or ten in a batch before you actually need to reflect on them. So it's a much smaller number of people. And um, it's all about the interview when you do a qual research program. And um, these interviews are really essential ways for you to gain a better understanding, a deeper understanding than what you had in the qual, in the quant, sorry. So let's talk about, let's go back to quant and talk about that. Um, I think that the output that you might expect from a quant survey is you really want some clear stats. So it's quite okay just to ask, uh, do you like this or which of these two do you prefer? Because you want real stats and data so you can do the key thing here is to compare and contrast. Now, the reason that I like quant is uh, it gives you sort of a baseline. It gives you a context It gives a little bit of tangibility. I like uh, the idea of just knowing we surveyed a ton of people and actually a majority of them have this really big problem. That would be an example of a piece of data um, that came out of a a survey that would be really instructional because you'd be able to say, well, geez, hey, it seems like a lot of people have this problem Um, and This is a confirmation that if we could solve that, that this has applicability to a large amount of people. In fact, it's a majority of our sample size. So that's really, really good. Now, when you get really fancy with your quant surveys, you can do a lot of filtering, comparing and contrasting. And um, 
really this is where you can do all sorts of interesting things uh, where you can, for example, compare some of the entry points on your screener, people who answered your survey by age. So you could compare younger versus more mature customers. You could do it on geography, those from East Coast USA to West Coast USA. Um, perhaps you even have some other screeners. Um, it's really interesting, you know, really basic uh, users or premium users. You can see all sorts of permutations. You can compare them and contrast them. So that's that's really the world of quant. And uh, to wrap that up, if you're thinking about doing a survey, uh, I would encourage you just to go largely multi-choice in your questions and maybe one or two open ones. They're always good, but don't do too many because you'll just be like working like crazy to try and process all those open questions. What's interesting is we go back to the qual. So this is an interview, you know, the researcher sitting opposite the customer, just having a chat, asking the questions. Obviously, please, please, please record the interview because you'll want to refer back to it and do some other things. But the output of this is some in-depth research and analysis. If you talk to 10 people and they all had a significant problem trying to get a particular job or task done in this given area, then the big thing is why. And that's where you want to use your, your discussion guide. Get some context, probe, understand. And, you know, generally I wouldn't go into um, uh, like a discussion guide with 20 questions because that feels pretty exhausting. So good measure, once again, 10 to 12 would be good uh, for a 30 to 60 minute uh, interview. Now, so both of those are going to give you um, great insights. Now, I really want to give you a bit of a gift. I want to explain how you can use them together. So I want you to imagine that you did your first survey and you've got your baseline, you know generally who the user is and what their pains and gains are. In the first round of uh, discussion uh, and interviews that would come after that, you really want to understand uh, the motivations and, and be asking why a lot here. You want to know why is this? Why is that? A lot of people have this problem. Why is time such a big issue? Why is the cost such an issue? And really dig in and get some context around not only some of the behaviors associated with the task, but motivations as well. Now, at this point, this is going to sound a bit crazy. I want you to go back to doing some more quant. I want you to go and do another survey. But what I want you to do now is to start propose, to propose and validate not only the problem, but the solution to what if we did this? How might this work? And really start to maybe use some stimulus, whether it's you know posters, videos, sketches, whatever you want to do. Use that in your next round of quant and see what feedback you can get in order to distill from the user what the problem solution model looks like. Lastly, go back and sneak in a few more user interviews, a last round of qual here. And in that, what you really want to do is understand what it would take for them to adopt this new product or service. Now, if you do this four part approach, you will get enormous levels of validation. And this is really key to design thinking. This is why I love it so much. It has a test and learn ethos at the heart of it. So we don't do guessing, we only do knowing. And so by doing quant, qual, quant, qual in that order, what you distill is a very strong uh, you know, signal through the noise, uh, validation of where you might go with your given product or service. So I really encourage you to run all of these uh, together. One of my favorites, a quick tip here would be do a survey one week, interviews the next, a survey another week, interviews again on that fourth week. Compress it. The more time uh, you have between your research, the more opportunity there is to lose momentum, lose a, a grasp of this insight and how we can have empathy for our customer. So by this time, you might have asked 40, 50, maybe even 60 questions to hundreds and hundreds of people, and you will truly form a sense of what 
life is like uh, for your users, what it feels like for a customer to try and get the job done. And this is at the heart of empathy. And what you will find remarkable here is how different that picture looks than what you may have guessed at the start. I can't tell you, I have done this so many times and every single time uh, I get back something that I did not expect, a real like woof, double take uh, piece of insight. And so I encourage you to use a model like this if you really want to build a brand new product or service. Now, one last tip that I have for you is it is enormously taxing. It's a huge effort to pull together all of the feedback you got in your surveys, all of the feedback you got in your interviews. And what I strongly suggest is that you use a tool like Dovetail. Dovetail is a great service that enables you to pull together um, audio, video, text-based uh, interview transcripts from your from your uh, uh, kind of qual efforts where you have a discussion guide and you're chatting with your user or customer. But you can also insert objects such as survey results from your quant. And what's really powerful is you can tag you can highlight, you can see patterns and clustering in the charts of all the themes. And this is really, really good because it then has the capacity to build insights. And if you say, hey, uh, a majority of people find this uh, given uh, job that they're trying to do very stressful, and if we could uh, re- compress the, the stress um, by say removing you know 10 or 15 minutes from the task, um, customers would highly value it. Let's say that was your insight. So you're essentially saying you've got problem solution fit here. I could click in an app like Dovetail and then I could do the tracing of the data points that feed that insight. Let's say Jim was in an interview and he, uh, talked a lot about time being a big issue, well, you would have highlighted that text, tagged that text maybe with time or time saving, and that tag then gets an association with the charts and the insights. So you can have what we call forensic insights, meaning that any insight is backed up by quotes from an interview and data that was in your survey your survey results. Now, there are lots of alternatives to Dovetail uh, as well, but you should check it out because putting that together with uh, your quant and qual findings enables you to build a rigorous picture to really know if you've got problem solution fit. And most importantly, once you've gone through that exercise, ladies and gentlemen, you will certainly understand your customer and you'll have a ton of empathy for them. Now, I know this was a pretty intense episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to follow up, we've got a ton on quant and qual research. We have a masterclass on design thinking. It's all free. It's all available at bottomup.io. So I encourage you to get over there and download all those slides and get all the goodies. Thanks for joining us here at the Bottom Up Skills Podcast. That's a wrap.